all and welcome to the SU Awards 2021. I'm Chloe Ferguson, your Student Officer for Campaigns and Engagement, and I'm delighted to welcome you along to the Accidental Theatre here in Belfast tonight as we celebrate remotely with you. It's been a year like no other, so we've shaken up the awards to recognise 10 winners across five all-new categories. Join us over the next hour as we celebrate the incredible achievements of our student community and hear from a couple of our members along the way. So settle in, start the party, and get involved online using the hashtag SUAwards2021. First up, let's hear about how our student volunteers have been getting along this year. I am I'm Jaden and I study pharmacy. Uh, being a first year, everything is new, so I through handy helpers I really got to meet a lot of people, meet meet, meet new friends, and it's good to help out as well. I got to clean up sort of take care of the leaves problem in the streets. So there are like dead leaves piling up and people would trip over them. So me and a few other people sort of cleaned up and make sure it's safe for everyone. I actually saw like an ad and I, I thought it would be really cool to help out and meet people. So I just joined. Um, Mission Christmas was really fun as well. We got to uh, pack presents for people who might not be able to afford it, and mostly for kids, of course, of different ages. I feel good about myself for helping people. It's also a really good program for uh, meeting people, especially for first years. I, I have met a, a lot of good people there. I would definitely recommend Handy Helpers. I have a lot of fun doing it, and I think it's a valuable experience for everyone. I'll definitely stay involved in Handy Helpers and hopefully there are more real life activities and I look forward to next year. Thank you so much for that Jaden and a huge thank you to all our incredible student volunteers who have achieved so much this year. I'm Jason and I'm joining Chloe in presenting duties this evening. I'm the Student Officer for Education and I work with academic representatives and staff from across the university. In my role, I've seen just how important student community has been this year. So I'm so excited to announce our first category for the evening, the SU Award for Supporting Our Community. This category received a brilliant variety of nominations, from residential assistants to peer mentors, from individual volunteers to our student digital champions. Finding our winners was no easy task. As Chloe mentioned, there will be two winners for every category, but first we'll take a moment to recognise our incredible honourable mentions for each category. Best of luck to all our shortlisted nominees for supporting our community. This short message is to say thank you. First of all, thanks from your mentees for welcoming them to Queen's and for helping them find their strides. Thanks also from your friends in Level 2 for always listening to their concerns and for always making sure everyone is up to speed and aware of events and opportunities. From the entire undergraduate community, thank you for contributing to the Student Voice Committee and for helping us further improve the experience of all students in the school. Thanks also from our future, international students for telling them what a great opportunity it is to live and study in Belfast. From your fellow students who have felt lonely and homesick, thank you for sharing your experience of being far away from home this past year. From other quiz players, thanks for being such a fabulous contestant. And finally, sincere thanks from us, from all members of staff. You've been such a wonderful presence at the school and your commitment to your fellow students reflects the very best of QUB, and we're very lucky to have you. Hi, my name is Courtney Garvin, and I'm a postgraduate student at Queen's, and I'm nominating myself, Orla Brady, an undergrad third year student, and Neve Audi, another postgraduate student at Queen's, um, for one of the SU awards, given our roles as co-founders, and admins of the Belfast Girl Gang, which is a virtual community space that we created in September and has now grown to almost 700 members. Um, we regularly host virtual events um, and encourage our members to look after their emotional well-being given this 
trying time of COVID and general anxiety caused by increased awareness of misogyny and sexual harassment. Thanks. I'd like to take this opportunity to praise the work of the Physics and Applied Maths Society Committee for all they've done at the events and support they've provided for the School of Maths and Physics uh, this year. Um, social interaction and cohesion has been very difficult this year, as we all know. And <clears throat> through by, by putting on innovative events and social gatherings uh, online, uh, the committee have really pushed the boat out to try and help out students all the way through the year. There's been something happening every week, and it has really been a lifeline to students in our school and beyond. My nomination for the QBSC Awards 2021. So during the lockdown period in March 2020, uh, the university closed down for COVID-19 and I had to take the last flight back to India and I was in quarantine for the next 14 days. During this time, I was reflecting on the skills and the experiences that I gained at university and I wanted to use these skills to uh, help the people during these troubling times. And I founded this initiative along with my brother called Feed the Navy 2020. So uh, we had a lead from the Thousand Lights area that the auto rickshaw drivers and the local corporation workers were uh, struggling from the economic lockdown. So we catered to feed about 2,000 people every day during this lockdown. And uh, this, we raised funds from the student community from across the world, uh, from the QB student community. They were very supportive and our initiative was promoted by the University Union and uh, global media channels. Uh, we were we were able to cater to, to up to more than 30,000 meals during the uh, period of the lockdown and we were able to help people uh, support their livelihoods during these important times. Michael has been a tireless advocate for his peers. He's represented over 7,000 students this year as EPS faculty rep. And in all the committee rooms he's in and in all the forms of the students' union, he's championed well-being, putting students first helping to co-create a new framework, getting tens of thousands of pounds of funding for mental health, um, and creating a new role as well, international student rep, so we hear the voices of international students on their education. I could go on all day about Michael's achievements and how fantastically he has performed his role, um, but he deserves this award so much, and um, so well done, Michael. He has clearly built an excellent, uh, excellent relationship with all the school reps, uh, as well as with the key faculty staff. Um, so for these reasons, I think Michael certainly deserves uh, an SEU award, and I would strongly support him to be given an award. Thank you. Congratulations to our amazing winners, Michael and Mohammed, and well done to our honourable mentions as well. Next up, we are celebrating the students who have truly championed wellbeing this year. Through social distancing and lockdowns, it's never been more important to look after ourselves. And we are so proud and inspired by the variety of nominations we've had this year. So let's take a look at our two winners and honourable mentions. Podcasts created by The Scoop are thoroughly deserving of the Championing Wellbeing Award. The Mental Health Scoop and The Good News Scoop have both provided platforms to discuss mental health and support students through challenging times. The Mental Health Scoop, hosted by Neve McMullen, has featured guests such as the mental health champion of NI, social media advocates, Olympians, motivational speakers and broadcasters, addressing issues including depression, anxiety, suicide, self-love and grief. It has gained overwhelmingly good feedback from students for its support and caring nature. The Good News Scoop, hosted by Rebecca Dobbin Donaghy, focuses entirely on positivity and has featured guests on a wide array of topics, including activists, young people and mature students, speaking about their success stories and how they have positively impacted their community. Both these podcasts and the hosts and the teams behind them have carried off incredible achievements and have demonstrated a passion from all involved to improve student wellbeing. I'm absolutely over the moon to nominate Rachel Halson for this award. Rachel puts mental health and wellbeing at the centre of everything she does. She uses her blog and her social media platforms called Your Best Is Enough to share the honest reality of living with mental illness 
and to educate others about mental health. Her passion is inspiring and her work is making a big impact in destigmatizing mental health. Rachel deserves so much recognition for her work and that's why I've nominated her for this SU award. Hey guys, it's your favorite RA Yomi here. Just in the middle of my workout, just thought I'd take a break to give you guys a bit of motivation this week. But I hope you guys had a great weekend and I hope you guys have an amazing week ahead. You've got everything it takes to conquer this world, to conquer this week. Don't let anything stop you, not even a sore thumb. Just go for it. You can achieve all your goals. You can do whatever you want, but just have a positive mindset. You know, have a positive mindset. Look on the bright side. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Love you guys. I'm really pleased to be nominating Connor, Owen and Nathan for the QBSU Championing Wellbeing Prize. COVID has meant learning remotely and one of the big problems we've had is isolation, people feeling lonely and not part of the student or the learning community. These three um, are part of our Triple ECS Mental Health Ambassador scheme, took it on themselves to find new innovative ways to connect the student body together and also to connect staff and students and bring down barriers. They set up a thing called a Discord server, um, a live environment that allows people to chat and talk. They regularly have over 100 people on it. They've encouraged students to join. They've had staff on there. We've done gaming, presentations, breaking down the barriers and really creating a wonderful safe space where people can talk, get to know other students and get to know the staff. We're not as terrible as we've seen. Really trying to recreate the experience that we're missing this year. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm so delighted to be nominating QUB Inclusion for the SU Awards. I think even from the setup of the society last year, we've just come such leaps and bounds. And if you ask, you know, anyone on the committee, anyone who works with us, we're just all so passionate about making a change. So um, I think that we really deserve an award. That was a brilliant lineup and congratulations to the Triple ECS Mental Health Ambassadors and the Inclusion Society for their well-deserved wins. Now it's been a really challenging year for our sports people and the normal calendar of training, competing and inter-varsity travel has been sorely missed. So let's take a break from our awards to hear from Chris, one of our sporting club committee members, on whether it's been choppy waters for the Paddle Sports Club or whether they've been able to go with the flow. Uh, my name is Chris from Okui. I'm studying a PhD in physics. I'm uh, currently the president of QUB Paddle Sports. So we do a multitude of disciplines. So we do like flat water paddling, canoe polo, and some white water. It's been quite a challenging year for the club, but I think we managed to exceed our expectations. We were quite lucky that kayaking can be adapted easy enough from being full contact to no contact. Uh, we've seen great benefit to the club from this. Our membership has grown and it's been great to see everyone out socialising and getting out, being active. I think the number one thing someone should do when they come to university is join a sports club or society. It really uh, impacts like a, a multitude of areas in your life. Like it's got a great social side. Like you'll instantly have 10 or 20 more friends as soon as you join. Um, you're getting out in the water, you're being active. Like it really does help your mental health, I think. It's one of those sports that gives you a really, really good adrenaline rush, which, which I think is great. Like you're going down crazy rapids and you're like, how the hell did I just survive that? I, I studied theoretical physics at uni and it's quite a solitary degree to do. Like you're not really interacting with people, you're kind of working by yourself. So it's been good to like develop my leadership skills, like working in a bigger team, and like it's also given me like an opportunity to give back to my club because you know uh, people you know brought me up through the ranks you know three years ago. So like it's it's been good to give back. If anyone's interested in water sports, hit us up at QB Pal Sports on our Instagram account, and we'll take care of you. Thank you so much for that, Chris, and well done to all our sporting clubs for getting through such an unusual year. But now, back to the awards. Our next category is Adapting to Challenging Times. With this award, we're celebrating our students who have really risen to the challenge. So let's take a look at our brilliant honourable mentions and winners.
Hi, I'm nominating for the Malaysian Student Society of Northern Ireland, MSSNI, and its president, uh, Yi Kang Chu. Ever since the pandemic, the society has tried its very best to find out innovative ways to better support our members, including uh, organizing various COVID-related initiatives and numerous virtual events or campaigns. Um, all of our initiatives are trying our best to engage um, current students as well as new students, ensuring that they have a better experience studying at Queen's despite the pandemic. We also recently organized our uh, annual flagship event, which is the Malaysian Night virtually, and donating all our proceeds to do major charities in the UK and Malaysia. And all of this uh, would not be possible without the support from all the committees, and especially uh, the leader, which is the president, uh, Yi Kang Chu. He has been the one who constantly supports the society's uh, direction making and ensuring all the new initiatives and all the society's projects can run smoothly despite the pandemic. Thanks. In a normal year, Photosoc would operate on a weekly in-person basis, although the circumstances of this last year have led us to adapt to the restrictions to provide the best possible experience for our members. Often this has meant limiting our in-person numbers to 15, incorporating social distancing and mask wearing, and taking advantage of the large outdoor spaces that Belfast and Queen's provide. For example, we've done the likes of light photography and astrophotography within these restrictions. When restrictions were even tighter, we had live stream style events where a few members would take out equipment or go out in photo shoots with models and showcase this to our members and also non-members via Facebook Live. In recent months, we've moved entirely online onto Discord, where we've held a variety of talks and workshops from guest speakers and also committee members on a variety of topics in photography. And finally, our big event, the Gallery of the Year, has been held virtually this year on an online platform, which was a huge success, and we were able to showcase all the hard work of our members. Thank you. Throughout this year, the DUA has welcomed seven guest speakers in total. The highlight was our centenary panel event, where we invited two MPs, two MLAs and a special guest to speak to the society. It was very well attended and a great opportunity for our members to ask questions of our politicians. The DUA has provided me with a lot of opportunities outside of the society, such as giving me support for standing for council for the SU election, and also for lobbying the Economy Minister, Diane Dodds, for the £500 payment for students in higher education. Due to the many difficulties that we students have faced this year from coronavirus, the Queen's DUA has been extremely welcoming to all freshers. We have had the opportunity to engage with older students and party members, including numerous elected representatives. Queen's DUA is an incredibly social society and there's always plenty of laughs at every meeting. It's also a society in which women are encouraged to um, make their voices heard and enter politics in Northern Ireland. Princess Logan is an absolute ray of sunshine. She is the co-president of Belfast Tomorrow and her kindness, compassion and positive energy have guided us and the society through lockdown. At a time where community and connectedness are more important than ever before, Francis has forged links between so many students, clubs and societies of Queen's. The QUB community and the blood cancer community are warmer, brighter places because of her presence. Frances is an exceptional leader. She's a knack for bringing people together, bringing out the best in people. She has created a year of innovative events using our online reach to bring a life-saving cause into so many more people's minds and lives. Belfast Marrow saves the lives of people with blood cancer. This year, we have Frances to thank for that. I am nominating Dara Tibbs for the Adapting to Challenging Times Award because Queen's Radio simply wouldn't have been able to function this year without him. As Queen's Radio's Head of Tech, Dara has managed to keep us running all year without having full access to our studio, producing content every week. Every live interview, SU Radio debate, Scoop on Sunday show and Queen's Radio podcast wouldn't have been made possible without Dara and the incredible team he has put together. He has been unbelievably innovative doing everything in his power to allow people's ideas to come to life. He has built socially distanced studios, mixed socially distanced performances, and edited countless hours of content in his own time. He is a credit to the society and to the SU community. Congratulations to Francis and Dara on your wonderful work 
and your well-deserved wins for adapting to challenging times. Now we want to take a moment to offer special recognition to one sporting club in particular. Just to let you know, there will be discussion of suicide and mental health struggles over the next few minutes, which you might find upsetting. As you'll hear in a moment, the rugby club very sadly lost one of its members this year. Gregory passed away in December, and with the permission of his family, we'd like to recognise the club's response in the months that followed. Our thoughts are with the club and with Gregory's family as we remember him tonight. Let's hear more from David Chambers, the club's development officer. Sadly, back in December, uh, we lost one of our friends and teammates, Gregory Gamble. Um, this was just um, sad as the news, um, but I suppose the reaction by the club and the committee was, was phenomenal. Um, they developed a pastoral care team, which job was to look after our, our members. Um, they do weekly check-ins with, with a number of, of nominated players each of them have. They've run quizzes. Um, <laughs> we're looking to run Mind Your Mate training here this month as well uh, for all members. And I suppose the big thing that happened in February um, that the committee drove was a fundraising campaign for So Sad Ireland. They work in uh, running suicide awareness uh, for young people all over Ireland. This was a, a charity that was recommended by Greg's parents. Um, the campaign was a huge success. They raised over £11,500 for Social Ireland, an extremely phenomenal uh, effort by the committee and generous donations by everyone all over the country. Um, so so th that in itself was, was brilliant. Um, a special mention to Edward Broom, a fresher this year, who completed, finished the, the campaign and got a lot of donations in by doing four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So, so class effort by, by Edward and really the whole committee. And after such sad news in, in Gregory's passing, uh, the legacy that will continue in the pastoral care team uh, and, and I suppose um, being able to fundraise each year for, for these sort of charities uh, is, is brilliant to see. And I think the committee are really, um, really deserving of, of the awards this year. Welcome back to the Accidental Theatre where we're celebrating tonight's event. Like so many other special occasions this year, we've had to improvise and find a fun, safe way to bring people together online. Fittingly, our next SU award tonight is celebrating innovative online activities. Online activities have become part and parcel of our lives, whether we're socialising, studying or attending yet another quiz on Zoom. We're so excited to announce our honourable mentions and deserving winners for the celebrating innovative online activities. Hi, my name is Kira McAllister and I want to nominate my team at QUB Voices for an SU award to recognise the immense amount of work they have put in this year to ensuring that students feel connected to the community while working remotely. Since September, we've been producing two episodes a month that discuss the issues affecting our community at Queen's, tackling themes like coronavirus, mental health and racism, as well as allowing postgraduate researchers to showcase the vital work that they are doing in these areas. The amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to produce this podcast is truly staggering. From connecting with guests and hosting to editing and managing PR, all while working remotely and adapting to COVID restrictions. Each member of the team has put their all into this podcast and given up countless hours of their time for the greater good. As a result, our listeners tell us that the podcast has helped them feel like they are not alone and that the issues they are facing are not unique to them. This team is truly exceptional and deserve to have their efforts recognised. I am nominating Thomas Copeland for the Celebrating Innovative Online Activity Award due to his dedication to both the Scoop and the Literifix events. Thomas has produced nearly 30 hours of live and pre-recorded content for the Scoop on Sunday making the scoop integral to student news at QUB. He has recruited a team of over 25 students who have created their own scoop podcasts and blog articles. The online SU election coverage by the scoop was an incredibly professional event. 
with the six hours of live debate in particular being integral to students to engage with the candidates. The seven lit talks Thomas hosted for the Literific Society have featured a variety of prominent political figures, allowing students opportunity to directly question those in positions of power. Thomas's events are not just incredibly well produced, engaging and insightful, but they have adapted through changing restrictions, constantly impressing everyone at both Queen's Radio and the Literific. Hola, my name is Rochelle and I'm the president of the Spanish and Portuguese Society and I speak on behalf of the committee in nominating our society. We're a very social society that typically runs big events inspired by cultural traditions such as Dia de los Muertos and Carnaval. Being limited to the online world, we had to replan our events for them to work in a virtual space. This year has really shown us the value of digital communication in terms of bringing members together and creating close relationships with them. In addition to increasing our social media presence with competitions and song and film recommendations, our weekly intercambios especially have always become a lifeline for some of our members as they offer a regular close-knit environment to actually speak to someone. Recognising the importance of connecting with people, we've held more events this year than ever before, including a salsa class and yoga in Spanish, and have actively reached out to other societies, both within Queen's and outside of it. I'm so proud of the committee and what we've been able to achieve this year, which is why I'm putting the society forward. Thank you. Hey, it's my great honor to nominate our evidence-based nursing EBN champions from the School of Nursing McGwiffrey. Our EBN champions include six year two nursing students, Alex Connolly, Andrina Christie, Ryan Cahoon, Sarah Dean, Eddie McArdle, and Gary McRae. These six pioneers have helped pave the way for a brand new innovative online learning activities in the year one module evidence-based nursing. The Super Six have helped to deliver our remote lectures. They helped to curate and manage our own module Twitter page. You can check that out at at NFM1121 EBN and join our growing army of followers. They provided online support to students who have struggled with the module and they've co-developed seven 60-minute audio podcasts to support consolidation of learning from the module. These guys are fabulous. If you want an example of how passionate the student team can work together to engage, entertain, educate and empower their peers, then you can look no further. It has been my honour to work with the EBN champions on behalf of the school and these guys right here. We just want to say thank you for everything you do and good luck in this nomination. Here at the QUBGP Society, we have recognized the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, and we've used these challenges as an opportunity to further grow and increase our reach. Our aims are twofold. Firstly, to support the academic needs of medical students at university, and to do so, we have created a wide range of innovative virtual solutions. This included using social media for educational purposes with the launch of our Instagram MCQ project, we then went on to run a series of virtual mock OSCEs for students in years two to five to practice their clinical skills. And we also launched our own revision podcast entitled Common Conditions in General Practice for Students by Students. Then in terms of promoting GP as a career, we ran a series of virtual events. This included GP with Specialist Interest events, the GP Careers Night, and our ongoing Dear Colleague project, which involves students and professionals from a range of healthcare disciplines, and most importantly, at its very heart, is the voice of the expert patient. We've learned many lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic, and hopefully this will allow us to continue to grow and develop as we move through the pandemic and indeed to be on the COVID era. What brilliant nominees and fantastic winners. Congratulations to the GP Society, the Evidence-Based Nursing Student Champions, and all our fantastic health and social care students who have achieved so much this year. Believe it or not, we're almost at the end of tonight's awards. Our final category just goes to show that we're all stars here. This award celebrates all the other weird and wonderful things our students have got up to this year. We were blown away by the nominations submitted for this category and we had a very difficult time selecting just two winners. For the last time this evening, let's take a look at our shortlisted and winning nominees.
like to nominate our secretary, Andrew Fisher, for the We Are All Stars Award. Andrew has been a member of the club since 2016, 2017, and in that time, he's the only person to have held all three positions in the executive committee. He's been president, he's been treasurer, and this year he served as secretary. And in all three of those positions, he served absolutely magnificently uh, and is a credit to his club. During his time, he's led many, many coaching sessions. He's helped me spearhead our relaunch and rebrand since 2019, helped secure sponsorship for the club for the first time ever. Uh, and it's also beyond that involved in coaching and refereeing at a local youth level uh, through Cubs and Scouts. On a personal level, uh, his help and assistance to me as president over the last two years has been absolutely valuable. I couldn't have done the job without him. So I'd really like the SU to give him this award this year. I think he really deserves it. I'm Chris and I'm the current president for the Esports Society here at Queen's. I'd like to nominate our society for the amazing work everyone in our community has done over the past year. Our society was officially ratified during the start of the COVID pandemic and over the past year has grown at a rate we never could have anticipated. Our society thrives within the online space, which we have cultivated mainly using the power of the social media platform Discord and the live streaming platform Twitch to connect our community together, providing a space to collaborate, innovate and showcase talent even amidst the isolation of this pandemic. To this end, we held a charity tournament in aid of the NHS during COVID, fielded teams in multiple esports leagues, attended digital conferences, webinars, held collaborative events with other unis in the UK and Ireland, held community nights to allow students to play new games, and meet other like-minded individuals and make friends during a time where we can't be together in person to do so. A one minute video doesn't do justice for what our amazing community has achieved so far. And I encourage you to have a look at our graphics and our written nomination for more information. Thank you very much for considering us. My name is Juliana and I'm Beach Officer in the Wine Participation Unit here in Queen's and I look after the Reading Together programme, which aims to improve literacy standards for looked after children. I am delighted to nominate this group of Queen's student managers for excellent programme delivery in very challenging times. Normally delivery is in person, using powered reading techniques, but due to the pandemic, we decided to move this online. We were very worried that the relationship building was going to be a lot more challenging, especially due to the individual needs of this group of children, but the feedback has been exceptional. This is a real testament to the hard work, dedication and commitment from this group of students, and I am delighted to nominate them on behalf of everyone involved with the project for this award. Not only did they achieve the programme outcomes of improving the literacy standards for the children, they've also raised the awareness and aspiration of higher education to this group of children. They have been a real credit to the university. All right, here we go. Uh, just started the half marathon for the uh, Student Hardship Fund run. Nice, cool day out here in, uh, in Canada. So, yeah, shooting for a time of under two hours. See how it goes, give you an update in a bit. What's up? First update here. I'm running for about 15 minutes and it's starting to rain, so uh, <laughs> might be a rather wet half marathon by the end of it, but uh, we're gonna stick it out here and see how it goes. <laughs> Talk to you in a bit. All right, so we're just coming up to the halfway mark here at about uh, 56 minutes, so we're we're on pace to do it in under two hours. I'm just gonna keep up this pace and keep smashing it. Luckily, the uh, rain held off. It's a bit gray, but it's dry. So here we go. Second half. All right, we're approaching the uh, virtual finish line at an hour and 53 minutes right now. So one sec. Here we go. All right, and that's, that's the half marathon done. Hour and 53 minutes. It's time to uh, cool down and get a smoothie. That's a good smoothie. Yeah, last but not least, just want to say thank you to everyone who supported us, whether that's taking part in the run or um, with, a, with a donation. Otherwise, it's been really helpful. Top to raise awareness for um, the student hardship fund. So, 
yeah, once again, thank you for that, and we'll see you next time. Well, folks, I hope you've all had an amazing night. It's Mr. Green, Urkran, Antis, the Maclean, and Lena. I'm Green, this year's Students Union President. While I'm co-gorgeous more, oh, I will live a leg and act. I want to wish you all a massive, heartfelt congratulations tonight. Students have had it hard this year, but you have all been part of making the world a wee bit of a better place this year. You have united for change. You have stepped up and supported your communities. You have championed well-being amidst the student mental health crisis. You have adapted in innovative and creative ways to make sure the student experience is so special this year. And you have proven that you're all stars. To Mr. Co Broadle as of a leg, I am so proud of you all, and you should be too. So a massive thank you to Jason and Chloe for hosting tonight's event, and a big thank you to all of you as well for making this year so special. I hope you've had a great night and keep celebrating wherever you are. Thank you. Mm -hmm.